if we look at the plan of the cottage cluster, the first thing we see within zone one is the 24-7 living area that Bob and Barbara Morris use. This has got a desired design temperature of 21 degrees centigrade, and as we said, it's expected to be used pretty much constantly throughout the year. The second zone, which comprises Cottage 5, is an annex. It's envisages having intermittent use, being available for guest accommodation during the year, but just as we saw in the lodge in case study one, there's no predictable time in which this annex can be used. The design temperature for this particular part of the building was slightly lower, reflecting the fact that most of the rooms will be used for bedrooms and sleeping purposes. Then, finally, we have the library. Cottage 6 is used for book storage, both on the ground and the first floors. Here, there are requirements to keep a reasonable background temperature to try and help conserve the books and also to allow for a possibility of relatively constant daytime use. I spoke to Bob Morris regarding the challenge of conserving such a resource. Bob, mm. this is by no means a simple, straightforward set of cottages lying next to each other. Could you tell me about some of the diverse uses that we have in Primrose Hill? Well, as you've seen, um, numbers three and four as you described them, were really building a house within a house. This one, which we refer to as number six, was actually usable, um, if a little bit dilapidated. And the use that we've put it to, as you can probably see looking round, is that it's my library. And it's solving the classic academic, retired academics problem of where to put the books and the notes, which meant a number of things. One is that we couldn't necessarily insulate it to the standards that perhaps you, ideally you and I might wish, although the roof here is, is very well insulated. Uh, the second is that books, I think, are particularly demanding. If they get too hot, they dry out and deteriorate. If they get too cold, they get damp and mouldy uh, and deteriorate again. So you need to control the, the temperature. Uh, added to that, in terms of my demands, is the fact that it's not this place isn't in use all the time. So there are times when a, a temperature in the mid-lower teens is very adequate uh, and economical, and then there are times you want to turn it up, so you want to control the, the temperature. This room we're in now is where I work, and hence every so often you push the temperatures into the lower 20s. Downstairs it just needs to be nice walking around looking after the books. So the upshot is that throughout cottages three and four, and also the two that we've just looked at, there is a real diversity in heat demand that has to be accommodated somehow. Diversity between the cottages, uh, and diversity over the days, between days. Um, so in that respect, the fact you've got, I think we've got a separate thermostat in each of the cottage units, and we can also adjust the heat output from each radiator. Uh, and, and that's something I guess we're kind of learning to do to get the best out of the, the fuel supply and to create the sort of atmosphere that you want. So we see in the case of Primrose Hill the client wishing to have a low carbon solution to the question of heating the building. Although much of the building has been upgraded it's still quite heavy in its energy demand. Some of the key features of the building, such as the glazing, was retained for conservation purposes. And you can see in the photograph the quality of the glazing that was in there originally and the character that the clients wished to keep for the house itself. So there's a balance between the imperative to reduce heat loss and also retaining the essential character of, in this case, a listed building. Before the new installation, the current heating provision was piecemeal. There were some wood-burning stoves, there were some radiators running off them, and provision of electric heaters. There's still a need for sustained high loadings, but we think that a solution is needed which is going to be flexible enough to deal with 
temperature setbacks, especially during the winter months in parts of the building which are used less and for reduced occupancy. For a low carbon solution therefore, renewable energy resources are vitally important in this particular case. We explored three options for renewables. Firstly, we looked at ground source heat pumps. As in case study one, we found that there was a difficulty of marrying lower output temperatures to the heat emitters in the building. This kind of installation is best suited to underfloor heating, and in this particular case, because we were keeping some of the floors, this was not a viable solution. In respect of wind power, there was no getting away from the fact that there was a high heating requirement for the buildings, and there would have been difficulties in terms of thermal storage of the energy that one gets from wind power. And also, in this particular situation, wind power is very, very suited to low demand scenarios, which we just did not have here. On the other hand, biomass is able to provide the heat required and also deal with key variations in demand. There was space for the biomass installation to go in, but there was a major challenge in how we intended to deal with the existing listed building. The biomass installation for the cottage cluster is located in one of the outhouses, originally used as a small kitchen. There are three key components to the system. Firstly, we have a boiler room, accessed directly from the outside. Within it, we've specified and put in an Okafen boiler rated at 32 kilowatts. This is the boiler room of the Primrose Hill Cottage Cluster. Here you can see the Okafen wood pellet boiler with its attendant service mechanism taking wood pellets from the store next door. In addition, we also have the control gear and quite importantly, especially in buildings of a listed nature, the flue. We'll be looking at the flue in a few minutes outside. Essentially with a boiler of this nature, there are a number of sophisticated ways in which thermostatic control of the spaces are achieved. Firstly, the boiler has a weather compensator fitted to it, which measures the external temperature, which means that first thing in the morning, the boiler is switched on depending on the external temperature and the warm-up time of the rooms themselves rather than at a fixed time. Each of the zones within the house also has a room-mounted thermostat to ensure that heating is adequately supplied to the spaces. You will see on the wall a couple of pump housings. These pumped housings serve the zones within the homes there is a red dial which is the output temperature and the blue dial which is the input temperature. If the output temperature and the input temperature are essentially equal, this is another control to stop the boiler and to ensure that it's economical in its use of fuel. 